What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Once again, another is still worth a video and this time around we're going to be talking about one of my favorite phones and actually one of the phones that I used for about, I would say a year, which is kind of, I mean, it wasn't a year, it was probably like six months, but it was still a very long time for me and that specific phone is the iPhone 7 Plus. We're gonna be seeing how it holds up in the, basically the first half of 2020. I'm going to update this video once iOS 14 comes out, which this phone should be getting. And then I'll go ahead and do a late 2020 review as well, but it's kind of hard to believe that this phone is going to be turning four years old this year. This phone came out in 2016 and you know, you have to kind of keep that in mind when you're looking at this phone and a lot of other phones that came out around the 2016, 2015, time frame. This was the age where phones like the Galaxy S7 were still around, phones like the OnePlus whatever phone at the time. I mean, the phones at the time, they weren't necessarily trying to look the best. They were just trying to be as functional as possible. And I think the same thing, the iPhone 7 Plus totally applies here. So to compare the iPhone 7 Plus to like a OnePlus 7 Pro or to a Galaxy S10 or to an iPhone 11, to compare it to that in terms of design isn't necessarily fair 100% because you know this was a whole different time frame it's cool to see the evolution and everything but even looking at the front i mean you still have a 5.5 inch 1080p retina ips panel and that panel itself is actually pretty good for ping an ips panel i think it's still kind of weird that apple is using an ips panel on top of that a 828p whatever resolution that panel is on the iphone 11 where they were even having 1080p panels that were actually pretty good on the iphone 7 plus so it doesn't really make too much sense for me but it is what it is what i will tell you is there's no true tone on this display which is kind of a big deterrent i mean you have something like an iphone 8 plus that has true tone and that panel is actually pretty decent even the iphone 10r that panel has true tone and even though that's a lower resolution it does give the illusion that it is a better panel than it really is which is really cool this phone doesn't have it and that's really the biggest downside of this ips panel you know looking to the future it's not getting true tone anytime soon and you can see that there's still quite a bit of bezel on the 7 plus that that bezel is not going anywhere and like i stated earlier it's kind of a bad thing compared to what we have now but when this phone was released you have to give it the benefit of the doubt it wasn't trying to be the best looking thing and i don't even think it was a bad looking device but obviously you know it still has a bunch of bezel on it home button on the bottom front earpiece being a speaker which is really cool on the bottom a lightning port no headphone jack this was the first iphone to get rid of that and as you can see that has been pretty much transpired to every single iphone after that so take it as you will i'm already kind of over it but i'm sure there's still a lot of you who don't really like that at all however looking on the back this was actually the first iphone to bring a dual camera setup which is really cool and i think that specific thing in and of itself really future proofed this phone quite a bit honestly the biggest downside i've been seeing for a lot of these older iPhones and just older phones in general that I've been reviewing is the lack of hardware features and this thing at least has a telephoto lens which is really cool and that really pretty much covers it up in terms of the outside there's a couple little things one IP67 does turn water resistance we now have IP68 on basically all phones but this one still has a bit of dust and water resistance which is really cool this was also the first iPhone to bring that which is awesome another cool thing and this is more of an opinion but I personally believe that the jet black version of the iPhone 7 plus which is the one I owned for a while. I don't own it anymore. I own the matte black and matte pink one, whichever that one is. But the jet black version is probably my favorite version of any iPhone that was ever released. It wasn't like glass. It was like fraud. I don't even know how to describe it, but it was one of the most premium feeling things ever. And I'm so glad I owned it. It was so cool. And hopefully Apple will bring that back with some later iPhones. <laughs> But that's kind of an opinion thing but basically on the outside familiar design we know what it looks like so that's why a lot of people won't really care or think it's ugly because we were so used and grown to this design so it's really not that big of a deal but that pretty much covers it up in terms of the outside now hitting on the software this thing was released with ios 10.0.1 we were able to upgrade it to ios 13.3 right now now looking into the future i can probably tell you it's going to get ios 14 and on top of that i think it might get ios 15 as well and the reason i say that that is because if you guys know the new iPod Touch, the 7th generation that just got released or announced, or it was released last a couple months ago, that thing has the same chipset as the iPhone 7 Plus, which is the Apple A10 Fusion chip. Now, it I've seen this done before by Apple, but sometimes when they release a device with the same exact chipset, it's not like the, it's the Apple A10X Fusion or whatever, like the iPad Air 2 was. It's the Apple A10 Fusion chip on the iPod Touch 7. It makes me think that Apple will probably extend that for at least an extra year of software support. I don't think they're going to cut the software support at like super early on that iPod Touch 7 generation. So that makes me think that the iPhone 7 Plus 
will probably end up getting an extra year of support. It's all an opinion. I don't know if that's 100% true, but based off previous things and based off what I'm thinking, that's kind of what I've seen Apple do before. So it will probably end at iOS 15 and that would be really cool. But dude, even if it doesn't get iOS 15, it's still getting iOS 14, which is still, you know, really, really going to be a pretty big update. I've heard they haven't really done a UI refresh in a while and hopefully iOS 14 can bring that and this phone will be supported with that 100%. So that's really cool. You're getting, as of this point, at least another year and a half of support. And if Apple switching to their new kind of software cycle thing, you might be getting a year of security updates on top of that as well, which is really awesome. So in terms of software, you're going to be set for a little bit longer, which is really good. What I will tell you though, is that one of the biggest advantages for the iPhone 7 Plus, and it doesn't really revolve around software, but it is kind of important. It's more of a hardware thing, but the iPhone 7 Plus is able to be jailbroken on any certain version version of software. It can be on any iOS version and you are able to jailbreak it, which is a really, really awesome thing. Before, just even if my last still worth the video I dropped last year, I couldn't even say that because this check rain jailbreak wasn't released then, but that was a huge development that happened in the last couple months and you're able to jailbreak any iPhone 7 Plus on any version. So that's a really important thing. That's a huge advantage for getting this specific iPhone is because you're able to jailbreak and it gets so many more tweaks that even the latest iPhones don't even have, which is crazy. So that pretty much covers it up in terms of the software. Now hitting on the performance side of things, like I said, this thing has the Apple A10 Fusion chip, a quad core CPU. Now there were three different models of the 7 Plus in terms of storage, a 32, 128, and 256 gigabyte model. All those models had three gigabytes of RAM. And what I can tell you is in the performance section, I think this is probably one of the best performing iPhones for the price and the age. That this phone was released. I mean, this thing was the first iPhone to bring three gigabytes of RAM. They eventually switched to four gigabytes on all models this year. Even the iPhone XR had three gigabytes of RAM, and I think the performance is pretty decent. I've been doing all those little comparisons here and there with all my iPhones and the 7 Plus included, and I noticed that really the 7 Plus sometimes is just right behind the iPhone 11 Pro Max or the 11 Pro or iPhone 11. Yes, those new devices are faster, like I've stated before, it's obvious that's a given, but the 7 Plus, for considering the price you're going to pay for it. You're not going to pay a thousand dollars for it anymore. And the updates that it's been through and everything, I think it's a pretty decent performing phone. And I think this is a really good sweet spot for this phone as well, where it sits in price and age and everything. And I kind of hit on that. If you're doing small tasks, you know, I'll tell you, it's going to handle everything fine. The three gigabytes of RAM is really, really, it's pretty good for an iPhone. I'm not going to say it's great, but for an iPhone, it's pretty decent. You're able to store pretty big apps in the background. And it's funny because even my iPhone 11 has a hard time storing certain apps in the background that my iPhone 7 Plus can easily store and retrieve, which is pretty crazy. RAM management on the new iPhones, Apple needs to fix it. I think it's a software issue. But in terms of performance, whether you're doing light tasks, big apps, whatever, gaming, really crazy, whatever, for the most part, this phone will be able to handle it. But I don't think you're going to get a 7 Plus for you to just, you know, go ham on the performance and try to get as much as you can out of it. I think it'll definitely handle the tasks that you want to get out of it, but it might take an extra second or half a second for you to get into the app. Really, that's the biggest difference I've been able to see, but ultimately, I think the performance is actually still pretty decent on the iPhone 7 Plus. Now, moving on to the camera side of things, this thing has two 12 megapixel sensors, a wide angle lens, and a telephoto lens. You're able to shoot 4K videos at up to 30 frames per second and 1080p at up to 120, 7 megapixel front facing camera. And like I stated before, really the biggest downsides of these older iPhones and just older phones in general are the lack of hardware features. So the lack of a telephoto lens, the lack of a ultra wide sensor, the lack of all these different things. The iPhone 7 Plus at least has that telephoto lens, which is really cool. You're still able to do portrait mode. You're not able to do night mode or anything, but you still have a bit more functionality than let's say like an iPhone 6S or something like that. So the fact that this thing has a dual camera setup is really good. I've been doing a lot of camera comparisons this year and you get or 2019 and you guys saw that I think the 7 Plus's camera is still actually really good. Even compared to an iPhone 11, I think the 7 Plus still holds its own for sure. So in terms of the camera setup and everything, everything. I think the hardware features are pretty decent for this older phone. I think the quality is really good still and I think the video quality is still pretty good for the price. It's not the best. You can't do 4K at 60. Even the front camera is only tapped out to 1080 versus what we have now at 4K at 60 on even the iPhone 11. But it is what it is. I'm not freaking out about it too much. And I think the overall camera quality is actually pretty good on this specific phone. Now ending it off with the battery life. This thing has a 2900 million power battery. 
Now, just like you guys know, battery does degrade over time. All batteries on any device really degrade. And what's surprising is, is that I have, I've had so many iPhone 7 Pluses, but the two that I currently own, the battery health is actually over 90%, which is really interesting. Usually I've had a lot of phones that even, it's not a, like a crazy old phone, but I was expecting it to be around 80 something, maybe even 70%, but these are all at around 90, which is really cool. So that's kind of a testament to Apple and, you know, the iPhones in general. They tend to hold their battery health really well, but that also depends on how much you've been using the phone, how much, if you're buying it used, how much that person used the phone, whether they let it die all the time. And I let my phone to die all the time, all the time, because sometimes they go weeks, sometimes months without using them and they just die on me. But the 7 Plus, I think depending on, you know, the battery health that you're starting with and if you take care of it, I think it did definitely last you in terms of battery life. And, and if it was at that full 100%, I think it, it's definitely still a pretty decent battery life. I don't think iOS 13 took a huge hit on battery as people might say it is. It did take a hit maybe a little bit, but I think battery life is still pretty good on the iPhone 7 Plus. So to kind of sum up the whole entire video, is the iPhone 7 Plus still worth it in 2020? I will say 100% yes. This phone is still worth it in 2020. It's a very good phone for the price. You're getting software updates, performance, a very decent camera pretty good battery life as well, all in a package that will probably cost you less than like $300 to buy. However, I will say at least get the 128 gig model. Don't go for the 32. That's too much low storage. That's literally nothing. <laughs> go for the least 128. If you can ball out, get the 256, but that's really all I got to say. If you want it for the cheapest price, I would probably tell you to get it from eBay. That's probably the cheapest place to get it, but I will find the cheapest one on Amazon and I'll link it down in the description below so you guys can get it from there and help support the channel at the same time. But that is pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit that like button. That would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So that means so much if you guys get hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. All those links are linked down below. I would really appreciate it if you guys could check it out. But more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.